woman, birth, death, infinity. <laughs> Good afternoon, and welcome to the Your Health Television Program here on AMP's Cable Channel 24 and on the Internet at www.ampmedia.org. Join our rotating host and their informative guest live every Monday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The purpose of the Your Health Television Program is to help get, make, and keep listeners and viewers like you healthy. And now, ladies and gentlemen, on with the program. Hello and welcome to the Your uh, Health Television program hosted by the Monterey County Health Department. I'm Emily Shelto, your host today and just about every third Monday of each month. Many opportunities for Shigella, Salmonella, E. coli, and Hepatitis A virus contamination of human foods exist in agricultural growing, harvesting, processing, and packing. Pathogen vectors and pathways range from domesticated and wild animals to water runoff from nearby dairy farms and grazing pastures, to contaminated irrigation water and pathogen transportation via farm equipment. Another pot a potential source of contamination that we'll be talking more about today is unsanitary agricultural field toilets and uses. This particular public health risk can lead to unhealthy conditions for field workers, widespread foodborne illness, extensive product recalls, and substantial economic impacts to the agricultural industry. Contamination of food crops in the field can happen when a worker touches food crops with unwashed hands, when food crops are contaminated by urine or feces excretia deposited in the soil, or when flies that are attracted to this excretia in the soil then carry the contaminants into the food crops. According to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, much of this burden could be prevented with better science and prevention tools. Which brings us to the topic at hand. Today, we'll be discussing an innovative approach to preventing and reducing foodborne illness right here in Monterey County, the salad bowl of the world. <clears throat> Developed by the Monterey County Environmental Health Bureau, the Agricultural Field Toilet Inspection Program prevents food crops from becoming contaminated by ensuring that one, field toilets are sanitary and convenient to use, and two, there is plenty of clean, safe water for drinking and washing hands. Here to talk more about the first ever agricultural field toilet inspection program is supervising public, uh, excuse me, supervising environmental health specialist, Ms. Susan Romando. Welcome, Susan, and thank you for being here. Oh, sure, thanks for asking me. Absolutely. So, Susan, this is a really interesting program. What, how, why was this program established? Um, I just want to start that the law is not new. This law has been out since 1975. And um, all we did is we developed the program. We dusted off the old uh, act and developed an inspection sheet. I gave you a copy. Indeed. And an application. And so that's why we say we developed the, the program itself. But back in 1975, um, I don't think you were born yet, Emily, but Cesar Chavez was an activist. And he um, wanted to try to help the agricultural workers with a lot of things. With one, their salaries, because they were low paid. Uh, they didn't have proper uh, toilets to use. Um, people died in the field from heat exhaustion, so he wanted to make sure that they had a supply of water. And he um, organized them. He formed um, the uh, UFW, and uh, he made it happen. So that's where we got the food, har it was called the Food Harvesting Act. So what prompted us to shake the dust off is we um, Monterey County um, had three foodborne illnesses, and um, it was all traced back to apparently produce that was grown in our county, and that was back in uh, the year 2004. So when that happened, or when the outbreak happened, um, we didn't have the field toilet inspection program yet. Uh, my director, uh, Alan Stroh, had said, Susan, you know, the state wants to know if we can help them out with the investigation. And I said, okay, sure, but I had, I didn't know where to start. 
um, I said, I, uh, maybe if we walk through uh, a creek that they suspected was the problem, maybe we'll find some interesting things. And so that's exactly what we did. We, um, it was a seven mile journey but a group of us um, oh. took a walk in the middle of the creek and we wrote down everything that we saw that could potentially be a problem. We saw things like cows um, sit, sitting in the water, horses running across the, the stream, chickens, pigs, um, even we saw a field toilet laying on its side oh. in the creek. So. We had our job cut out for us, and uh, there was a lot going on in that in that water and kind of just behind the scenes is what you're saying. Exactly, which the public doesn't have access to this particular creek. It's um, located behind residential homes, and so it's like a, at the hidden creek. Um, and that's not the only creek in the county that has some issues. We'd have to walk all of them, but this particular one was the reason why we came up with this program. Because when I reported back, oh, one of the things that I said was, oh, and I saw a field toilet laying sideways in the creek. I didn't know if there was still um, contaminants or whatever in there. So uh, I said, you know, I think what we can do is to bring the field toilet program back, the inspections. and. Even one, one of my coworkers said, no, it's not going to work, because we tried it. Um, I've worked in the health department over 25 years, oh. and we had the field toilet inspection program, but we couldn't get out there to all the fields. Our carts were getting stuck in the fields. We, we couldn't locate them, so it just wasn't working. We turned it into a registration program and only went out when there was a complaint. Okay, so it wasn't a routine, right. um, you were just following the mandates mm -hmm. that were, you know, bestowed upon you from the state. Exactly. We'd get a complaint, we'd know the location, we'd go out. So my coworker said, no, no, it's not going to work, we tried it, and I was like, but we're going to um, do it the smart way. And so everybody said, okay, what's the smart way? Well, we... Uh, Environmental Health, we inspect uh, the mobile food facilities, the lunch trucks that you see oh, out yeah. there. And um, in the years past, it was kind of like our field toilet program. We couldn't get to them, couldn't find them. So by saying inspecting smart, we had the mobile food facilities come to the health department. Um, we make an appointment, and they, they come to ours, our facility, and then um, we'll take a day and we'll go out and uh, find them and kind of randomly inspect them. So it's worked. So that's the same thing. And we use, and there's a sticker there. Hold up the sticker. This sticker we put after we do the inspection for the mobile food and the field toilets. When we conduct the inspection and they pass, we put that sticker in the left upper hand corner of the vehicle and also of the field toilet. The color uh, coincides with the DMV registration color. Oh. So we know year to year if that particular unit has been inspected. Just by first glance. Mm hmm Okay. And you could see it 100 feet away. I've actually started noticing some. Did you? Yeah, oh, since we've been good. talking, so. Good. Good. Um, then it's working. <laughs> the, let's see, the other thing. Um, <coughs> You were saying Thanks. about how the field toilet program kind of was established by doing smart inspections right. the smart way, just like the food. Uh, exactly. So what truck. we we do similar with the mobile food facilities mm -hmm. is that we go out um, to the yard. Um, some companies have like a thousand field toilets, so we'll actually take a team, go out into the yard, and inspect them, and then everybody's putting the sticker on. Now, the ones that aren't in the yard, we have their foreman or somebody actually drives out in the field. Hmm. Um, they know where all their toilets are, and then we do the inspection that way. Now, there's 8,000 field toilets in Monterey County. Oh, wow, okay. And we've already inspected 6,000 of them. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, and this is every year. Uh, if some of the um, yards 
like open up at 4, 4.30. They want to get the toilets out to the fields by 5 or 6. Our inspectors are out there inspecting them. 5 or 6 in the morning? 4 in four the morning. In the morning. Okay. They want to get those toilets out to the fields by 5. So you've got to inspect them first. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm following. Right. And so. So when you, well, let me, let me ask you, let's back up a minute. So when you said to everyone, look, we're going to do smart, we're going to do this the smart way, smart inspections. What, what kind of conversations were being had at the health department? Was it more like, how are we going to fund this program? How is this going to work out logistically? Is this appropriate fit for environmental health? Or what kind of barriers, if any, or challenges did you encounter, you know, internally at the health department um, or and or from, you know, the agricultural community locally? Any pushback at all? Um, there were some. There was some resistance. Like I said, there was some resistance within, you know, our own Environmental Health Bureau, but not really. It, um, it took us two years to think the whole process out about how we're going to collect the revenue to um, go out and do the inspections, um, to develop the inspection report, the applications. It took a lot of time, um, but we did it, and uh, we had a group, and we all worked really well together. So there wasn't any problem there. Um, we did get some opposition, and I, just a handful of farmers that really um, didn't want us out there. Who, who wants inspectors right. you know, out on their, um, their property? Uh, but other than that, no, it was, it was really great. Um, our director, John Ramirez, has done a great job in uh, he, a lot of outreach, a lot of education, a lot of public speaking. He would have meetings um, in different towns, and uh, he stood up and and he did great. But he got the program promoted. Excellent. Well. So he went out and got feedback from the community mm -hmm. and and really sort of heard their voices before it was okay. This is what's happening now. Right. The first year, the rollout was pretty soft. We went out and um, educated a lot more. Um, rather than writing people up, you know, with violations. Right. And there was a study that was done, and it showed that when we first started in the um, in 07, when we first started, there were like 88 percent uh, violations noted, mostly hand washing, uh, no soap, no towels. Then in 2008, it was a drop. To 76 percent, huh. and then the following year another drop to 53 percent, and now in 2012, uh, there's very very few. Even if they didn't have any soap or towels, the foremen have the supplies in their truck, so we haven't seen any issues. So our program is working. Oh, and uh, I brought this. This is an example of what we used to see years ago. Um, it looks like an uh, outhouse. That's exactly what it is. Okay. Uh, they did get fancy and they put a pipe here uh, to allow the sewage to go, we don't know where, yeah. where it's right going. Right on the grass, maybe. But this was typical. Okay. And um, later on in the segment, you'll see what we're seeing out there now, and there's a tremendous difference. Wow. So this is what you saw uh, that fell over on its side. This isn't the particular one. But this one like this? Yes. Okay, this thing is a little rickety. Um, <laughs> definitely doesn't look clean. No. Nope. Like you said, the runoff looks like it's going nowhere or right there into the grass. Right. And, and this, it, perhaps it's a cooler right here. It looks a little rusty. It does. Would you like to drink out of that? <laughs> not today, not today. So um, we've, we've come a long ways, but the companies that are out there now, they have, oh, beautiful units. Um, and so There's tell me about that, though. Does the uh, farmer, the owner of the farm, the owner, owner of the field, do they buy these so they own them, or do they contract with a company that, like, provides some the mobile facilities? Some own their own, but there's quite a few companies out there that have uh, thousands of units, and um, they take the unit out to the field, and then they bring them back in to clean, or they'll clean in place. They won't clean in the field, so, but... Um, They'll move it to the side and uh, 
do a thorough washing and fill everything up. So who has to hold the permit in that case? Is it the owner of the uh, the toilet, the the port of the field toilet, or is it the uh, whether that be the farmer or is it the company that owns the the field toilet? It's whoever owns the field toilet. Okay, so They're it may the not the responsibility holder. may not fall on the on the farmer. No. Okay. Um, but when the field toilet's out there in the field. Um, the supervisor, he's responsible f to make sure that the, the supplies met. Okay. That there's adequate water, there's toilet paper, there's soap. Very interesting. So, Susan, I just want to kind of recap some of the, the very early, like, contextual issues around the, the implementation of, of this program. You've, you've given us an excerpt from the um, California Health and Safety Code. I don't know if folks can see this, but it's dated 1975, like you were mentioning initially. That's the original one. So Correct. this is the original uh, uh, requirement legislation around uh, the mandate to have field toilets available. Correct. So that started in 1975. You were inspecting field toilets in the 80s, kind of? Yes. And then um, after a number of foodborne illness reports and outbreaks, Yes, there was uh, the movement to kind of make this an official program, and that's where we have this. That's correct. Okay, I wanna make sure that we've got um, our timeline kinda down so folks know. Oh, that's correct. Know when, when we're talking about what. Um, <clears throat> Susan, I, I realize you're gonna be around for the next segment, and so I wanna thank you for um, taking the time to talk with me today, this segment, and I'll thank you for advance for sticking okay, around for sure. the next segment. Sure, no problem. Um, but right now, we're gonna take a short break, so don't touch that dial. We'll be back in just a moment with more of the Your Health television program.